Good afternoon. One of the questions that I get most often is where should we stay when we come on vacation to Walt Disney World? And I think that that's a pretty subjective question. It all depends on what kind of things you're looking for in a hotel and like what factors you have when picking a hotel. So I thought, what are my top five favorite hotels? And that's what I wanted to make a video about today to hopefully help you guys in your journey and trying to pick out a hotel while staying at Walt Disney World. I have a lot of factors that come into play when I'm thinking about hotels and like what I liked about them. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it's gotta be the amount of USB plugs in that room. And surprisingly, it's not. The biggest thing for me is actually food and how easy it is to get food and what the food is like at the resort. Another thing is how easy it is to get from the resort to the parks, what you can see from that resort, like what the views are like, what the resort looks like, what the aesthetic of the resort is, and just how the resort feels which is really an interesting thing. And we'll get into that once we get into the list. And so I'm gonna start at number five. And for number five, I picked the Art of Animation Resort and we stayed in the Finding Nemo section in one of the family suites. And I really, really liked this room. I liked the look of it. I liked how big it was. It kind of had a few little drawbacks here and there. Like it was all tile floor, which I kind of felt like made it a little bit louder. And uh, you could, like if you're walking around barefoot and doesn't feel as nice as carpet would. But other than that, like it was a great room and I really, really, really liked the resort. One of my favorite things to do there when we were staying there was we went and we played in the splash pad and we played in the pool and Jackson had such a good time, like just splashing around in the pool and the pool was big. And because we were staying in the Finding Nemo section, we were just like one step away from the pool. You just had to walk out the door and you were there at the pool. And the splash pad was great too. There were other pools. There was a, a Cars pool and then there's a Little Mermaid pool too. Those were a little bit further away, but they were also like a little bit less crowded. So if the big pool, which is called the Big Blue Pool, if that got too crowded during the day, we had a place that we could go that was a little bit more secluded, less people in it, but there wasn't as much. There's not a splash pad at the other two pools, but they were still nice. They were still nice pools. So like I said, it, well, it is called the Big Blue Pool and we were staying in the Finding Nemo section. And the thing that's unique about Art of Animation is it's kind of overpowering with the theme of animation. Every kid knows cartoons. So you can see all of these larger than life cartoons and displays on the outside of the building. And it's just a fun feeling when you walk in there. When you walk into Art of Animation, you really feel the vacation, like you're at Walt Disney World. When you're staying at some of these other resorts, even some of the other resorts on my list, you don't exactly feel the Disney spirit as soon as you walk in. Like sure, when you get to the parks, yeah, well, okay, we're at Disney, but like that could be a plus or a minus for you. You know what I mean? Like you could just want to feel all of that Disney while you're at the parks and then have a little bit of an escape when you get back to the resort. But for Art of Animation, it's Disney at the parks, Disney at the resort. So like the room was themed to Finding Nemo. Our family suite was like pretty heavily themed to Finding Nemo. It really felt like you were in the cartoon and then you open up the window looking out and you're looking out on the pool and everything's Finding Nemo themed. And it was great. Like I, I don't know, I really enjoyed it because it really does put you in the Disney mood. Another thing about Art of Animation is it is a Skyliner resort. So you have easy access to Hollywood Studios and to Epcot or if you wanted to go to any of the other Skyliner resorts, you just hop on and go to those rest. You can go to other restaurants, like other resort restaurants. Say you wanted to go to Caribbean Beach to go to Sebastian's Bistro, just hop on the Skyliner, head on over to Caribbean Beach, go to Sebastian's Bistro. So one of the drawbacks for me to Art of Animation was the food because it's basically just food court quick service theme park food. You're not getting like a big change in variety in food depending on what restaurant you go to, there's just the one restaurant. It's a food court and there is a lot of different variety of food in this food court, but it's still just a food court. All of these resorts also have bus service over to Disney Springs. A lot of fantastic restaurants at Disney Springs, but I like the idea of being able to walk out of your room, go to the food court, get some food real quick, especially in the morning. That's one thing that I like to do is to be able to just like go out, pick up food, bring it back to the room, eat it with everybody. So there you have it. That's why I picked Art of Animation for my number five. And now moving on to number four, I picked the Grand Floridian. And if you 
are looking for a hotel that has easy access to Magic Kingdom, it doesn't get much easier than the Grand Floridian. Number one, it's on the monorail line and it is the last resort on the monorail line. So you get on the monorail at the Grand Floridian and you scoot right over to Magic Kingdom, one stop away to Magic Kingdom. It does take longer at the end of the day because you've got three stops coming off. You have Contemporary Resort, Transportation and Ticket Center, Polynesian, then Grand Floridian. So the way that I like to do it is you can take the monorail over to Magic Kingdom and then you just take the boat back because it is the first stop on the boat coming back. But it is like if you take the boats from Grand Floridian over to Magic Kingdom, you have to go to Polynesian first. So I think that's a good system in my opinion is to take the monorail over in the morning and then take the boat back at night. The other thing that you could do is if you're up for it, like you're gonna be walking a lot during the day, they did just open a walkway that goes from Grand Floridian over to Magic Kingdom. It is a pretty good walk. I feel like it's about three quarters of a mile. It's a pretty, it's, it's a good walk. Like it'll, it'll get you woken up in the morning. But I have seen pictures from people seeing like deer and stuff like that, turkeys along that walk. So you never know. Not a lot of people are on it. There's not a lot happening over in that direction. So you might see some wildlife on the way over. Uh, also speaking about location, Grand Floridian has fireworks view. So if you are not wanting to go into the park for the fireworks, you can watch the fireworks from the Grand Floridian. The room that we stayed in was a suite and it had fireworks view. We stayed there because it was the last room available on the day that the fireworks came back after being shut down for COVID. And uh, it, the view was phenomenal. Like I really enjoyed seeing the fireworks from the balcony of that room. There are a lot of other rooms at the Grand Floridian that have fireworks views. You don't have to get a suite. Uh, it just happens to be that that was the last room that was available for us to get that night. The other thing that's great about the Grand Floridian is you're right next to the Polynesian. You can literally walk over to have breakfast at the Polynesian or to have drinks at Trader Sam's or to get food from Kona Cafe or something like that. But don't sleep on the food at the Grand Floridian. The food is fantastic. I have not had a bad meal at the Grand Floridian Cafe. They've got Narcoosies there. They've got Citrico's there. There is Gasparilla's, which is their quick service restaurant. And they also have Victorian Albert's, which is the most expensive restaurant at Walt Disney World is a five diamond restaurant. We've eaten there one time and we will put that video in the description down below. It was a little bit of a long meal for us and they did just reopen it. So I think we might try to plan and go back and see if it's changed or how we like it. If it's, if it's better, maybe it'll take less time. It took us about five hours to eat there. It was, it was quite a long engagement, but all of the other restaurants are really, really delicious. Even Gasparilla's, which is their quick service. And more often than not, they have special food items at Gasparilla. Usually like during the time of year, like say you're there for Valentine's Day or for Christmas or for Halloween, they will have like special treats, special snacks at Gasparilla for that time of year. And then as far as entertainment goes, the pool at Grand Floridian, super fun. There's a big slide that comes down into the pool, but Jackson absolutely loved the splash pad. It is themed to the Mad Hatter. It's got a little slide in there. And Jackson, you guys know Jackson, he could slide down slides all day long. And if it's a water slide, it's even harder to get him out of that pool. So if you have a fan of splash pads in your family, or if you have a young child like a toddler, I highly suggest Grand Floridian for their splash pad. And they also have like recreational things. There are other pools around the resort. There's another pool that's not as exciting as the main pool, but then there's also like they put out mini golf and like ladder ball and little games for people. Anybody can play them. They're just sitting out there on a lawn and you just walk up and you can play them. And then if you're there for Christmas, there's a giant Christmas tree in the middle of the lobby and they have a gingerbread house and you can go and you can buy gingerbread cookies. It's a phenomenal resort. It is a little bit more pricey compared to Art of Animation. And I will say that our Art of Animation stay was kind of expensive. There have been cheaper stays at other resorts. Like it was cheaper for us to stay at Old Key West than it was to stay at Art of Animation in a bigger room at Old Key West. And I think that's just because those rooms are so desirable that they can charge more for them. And Grand Floridian is a deluxe resort. All three monorail resorts are deluxe resorts. So those will be a little bit more on the expensive side just because of the name Deluxe and because of where they're located. And now on to number three, my number three resort, Fort Wilderness. This has the most options for the most amount of people, I think, in my opinion. So 
You can go camping at Fort Wilderness. You can do an RV at Fort Wilderness and they have cabins at Fort Wilderness. So uh, the cabins are considered a moderate resort, like a moderate room. And they are one bedroom, one bath cabins. And they're awesome. Like I really enjoyed the cabins. And the thing that you wanna try to do for Fort Wilderness, and it's probably the hardest to do, is stay there during Halloween or Christmas. And the last time that we stayed in the cabins was for Halloween. And the thing that's exciting about staying at Fort Wilderness for Halloween is you can rent a golf cart and you can drive around, it's what they call looping. And you go looping around Fort Wilderness and everybody has their campsites decorated for Halloween. Tons upon tons of inflatables and lights and like animatronics and people go all out for Halloween at Fort Wilderness and Christmas. I do suggest that if you have the ability to go looping at Christmas, you give it a try because everybody, just like Halloween, people at Christmas put up Christmas decorations, Christmas lights, Christmas inflatables, just Christmas everywhere across campsites, RVs. Some people even decorate their uh, cabins. A lot of people decorate their golf carts. Fort Wilderness has unofficial golf cart parades every Halloween, every Christmas. I think there was one on the 4th of July. They just like people decorate their golf carts for the season and then they will pick a specific day and drive the golf carts in a parade. It, it, it's such a cool environment. Like there's this huge sense of community around Fort Wilderness. And like the thing that's difficult is getting a reservation around Christmas or Halloween because so many people put so much into it and love going to Fort Wilderness during those holidays that it's hard to get a reservation. It's really hard to get an RV spot. It's hard to get a cabin. Campsites are a little bit easier to get. And also the campsites are the cheapest way to stay in a Walt Disney World property. So if you're looking for something on the budget, Fort Wilderness, that's where you wanna go. There's also so many other things to do at Fort Wilderness. They have Segway tours, they have archery, they've got campfire sing-alongs, uh, they've got horseback riding, they've got pony rides for the kids, a, a carriage ride. We did a carriage ride one time. It, there's just so much happening. Uh, you can rent bikes. There's playgrounds everywhere. It's such a like it's such a neat environment. You can buy firewood, build a fire, roast marshmallows. You can hear the electrical light parade. You can go down to the waterfront, and watch it go by. You can hear the fireworks from your campsite. Uh, you might be able to see them from the waterfront. It might be kind of an obstructed view. Then there's also the food. So a lot of it's like barbecue. And then there's also hoop de doo Review. So hoop de doo Review is a dinner show where you are served all you can eat, fried chicken and baked beans, that sort of stuff, following up with a delicious dessert of strawberry shortcake. And you can, it's actually all you can drink beer too during the show. And you get a show. They put on a show for you. And we've we haven't gone recently since it's reopened, but we have been before, and we'll put a link to that video in the description down below so you guys can see what the show used to be about. They have made some changes to it. So I, I really feel like Fort Wilderness has something for everybody. Let me know in the comments section down below if you agree with me on that statement or uh, not. And that brings us to number two on the list. And number two on the list for me is the Riviera Resort. There's just something about the feel of this resort. Recently, I was walking around Caribbean Beach, which is a neighboring hotel to the Riviera. And as soon as I stepped foot onto Riviera property, the feeling just changed. Everything felt different as soon as you walked in there. I don't, I don't even know if I can explain it properly through video, but like as I transitioned past the Skyliner, which by the way, it is a Skyliner resort, from Caribbean Beach over to Riviera, there was just like, you go through this tunnel with this mosaic across the top. One side's Peter Pan, one side is Rapunzel. And you end up in the Riviera and just that walk through that tunnel with a fountain in the middle of it just changes the feel as you enter into the courtyards there. I don't even know how to explain it. It's something really unique that Disney does at this resort. And you feel that as soon as you pull up to the resort, they've got this huge port cochere right out front. And then you walk in and off to your left, you've got Le Petit Cafe where you can go in, you can get a coffee, you can get a nice little 
like pastry or dessert type treat. And like you can just set yourself in the mood for a fantastic vacation right off the bat. And then as you make your way through the hotel, you find all of these paintings that are all of these different styles of painting, but each painting has a Disney touch to it. And you can also buy these paintings. And we have bought paintings from the Riviera. If you guys can recall downstairs in this house, behind where we often film, we have these two paintings of Wally and Eve. And those came from the Riviera. We've got some that are Aristocats. We, like we bought the artwork from the resort because we liked it so much. And the rooms, there's such a huge variety of styles of rooms that you can get. You can get a one bedroom, you can get a studio, you can get a two bedroom and the views out the back and out the sides. Fantastic views. Our, our room that we stayed in happened to look over the pool and the grounds and there's so much to do. They've got bocce ball, they've got uh, just some chairs for you to sit in and swing in and there's just like lawns for you to hang out on and little cafe tables all over the place and a pool and a splash pad. And when we were staying there, we didn't have the chance to go into the splash pad, but I think we are gonna go back and stay again just to experience the splash pad, just so Jackson can experience the splash pad. It's called the Sivu Play Splash Pad. It's got slides, it's got splashing in fountains and water and everything like that. And it just looks like a lot of fun and I wanna go back so that Jackson can experience it. Another thing that is at the Riviera is the food. A lot of people rave about Topolino's Terrace. We didn't get a chance to eat there the last time that we were there. I did eat at Topolino's Terrace during the preview of the Riviera Resort, and the food was really, really good. And then the other restaurant that is the quick service restaurant is Primo Piatta. Fantastic food. I have not had a bad meal from Primo Piatta, and you can get it in there, and then you could take it outside, sit in one of the cafe tables, and really feel like you're on the Riviera. I don't know, there's something really magical about this resort and I just can't wait to go back. And that's why it claimed my number two spot. Oh, did I mention that it's a Skyliner resort? So super easy to hop on the Skyliner, head over to Epcot, head over to Hollywood Studios. If you wanted to, you could head over to Caribbean Beach, you could head over to Art of Animation. Oh, th something that I feel like is overlooked about the Skyliner is that you can take the Skyliner from Riviera to the Epcot station and you're not actually inside of Epcot. You're basically on the boardwalk. So you can take the Skyliner over to the Epcot station, come out and instead of going into Epcot, you go over to the boardwalk, tons of restaurants there. You could even walk over to all the restaurants at the Swan and Dolphin Resort. It's such a good location and such a good mode of transportation and that's what really seals the deal for me with Riviera. Nice resort, easy to get to places. I don't know, I like it a lot. Now, on to number one, but before we get to number one, I do want to mention an honorable mention. And that honorable mention for me is Old Key West. Really enjoyed Old Key West. Old Key West was the original DVC resort. If you're not familiar with DVC, is is Disney's Vacation Club. They call it Vacation Ownership. A lot of people equate it to a timeshare. So Old Key West was their original DVC resort. So they made the rooms just bigger. Like the rooms at Old Key West are big and there's so much space in them. You've got a nice patio out back. The restaurant, Olivia's at Old Key West is so good. Best fried chicken at a Disney resort. I don't know if it would beat out Art Smith at Homecoming or that darn chicken sandwich over at Everglades. I might have to do that one day and like compare chicken, fried chickens across a bunch of different places just to see who has the best fried chicken, but yeah. It's just a good feel. The reason that I didn't put it in my top five was because it's kind of far away from everything. So it takes a little bit of time to get places. It, it is close to Disney Springs. So I don't know, and it's close to Epcot, sort of. I don't know, that's sort of why I didn't put it in my top five. I love it. I love Old Key West Resort, but there was just a few other things for these other five resorts that kind of just beat it out. And for my number one resort, I have to base it solely on one restaurant, and that is Geyser Point. Geyser Point at Disney's Wilderness Lodge seals the deal for me. It is such a great place to eat. Outdoor seating, you're right by the water, you're just in the shade, 
it's wilderness around you, the lake right there, the guys are going off behind you, the food is fantastic, just a good feeling all around, the breeze blowing in off the lake, even on a hot day, it's not too hot out there. Such a good place to eat. And not to mention, Wilderness Lodge is fantastic. The aesthetic, as soon as you walk in, gigantic lobby. During the Christmas season, they have a huge Christmas tree that they put up in the center of the lobby. There are hidden Mickeys everywhere. There's a specific hidden Mickey hunt that you can go on all around the resort. It's just such a good place to stay. Not to mention the cabins at Copper Creek at Wilderness Lodge are hands down the best accommodation we've ever had on Disney property. Loved it, although it is very, very expensive. It's one of the favorite stays that I've ever had at Walt Disney World. And then if you just happen to be walking around, there used to be a path that you could walk from Wilderness Lodge over to Fort Wilderness. It has since closed down because they were supposed to be building a resort in between the two. That resort I think has been canceled, but because of that, the pathway isn't there anymore. But that doesn't mean that you still won't see wildlife around Wilderness Lodge. We have been just walking around Wilderness Lodge, sort of over near the far end of the cabins, and we've seen deer, like white-tailed deer hanging out at Wilderness Lodge. But it's just so unique being able to see them, like walk out of your, out of your hotel room and just go out on a little walk just around the resort. You'll see deer, you'll see turkey, you'll see squirrels. Of course you'll see squirrels. Lots of different things, lots of different wildlife at Wilderness Lodge. Not only is Geyser Point delicious, but Roaring Fork is delicious, their quick service option. They have Artist Point at Wilderness Lodge where you can meet Snow White, the Seven Dwarves, the Evil Queen. It's such an interesting place. Like all of Wilderness Lodge has so many unique locations and unique things to do and places to see. Or you can head over to the Boulder Ridge Villas at Wilderness Lodge and you can go into the Carrollwood Pacific Room and you can sit in a room that is surrounded by train memorabilia, all as like an homage to Walt's love of trains. Or you can find all these little like nooks and crannies and quiet spots near fires where you can sit and read a book in a little chair. It's such a nice resort and such a nice feeling and such a great place to go on vacation. And that's why it takes my number one spot. So. There you have it. That was my top five places to stay at Walt Disney World Resort with an honorable mention in there just for fun. Let me know if you guys agree with my list or if there's a place that you guys feel like I left out of the list and that you guys like a lot better than the five or six that I chose. Leave me a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you pick out a place to stay at Walt Disney World Resort. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.